Hello everyone and welcome. Yes, my name is Arrowfire and welcome back to another episode of Look Out and Shout. Where today we are reviewing something large. Today we are reviewing Planet X FX C05 Proteus, their version of an IDW sludge. Now, this was teased at I think a TFCon some time ago. And then it sort of went a bit quiet since up until maybe end of last year, we started to see some prototype images. And whilst Planet X have released their IDW Grimlock, their Cacus, which has been fairly well praised aside from the transformation, it was never truly expected that they would do a whole range of Dinobots until we saw the T silhouette for Sludge. Now Sludge is one of my favorite characters and actually probably my favorite Dinobot, but you can't really mess up the Dinobots. And yeah, it does bring up the question, do we need another large set of Dinobots? I've got a few, I've got a few, and this is a large bot. And of course, you too can purchase your own copy of this through showzstore.com. And I would encourage you please to go and purchase from showzstore at the top of the homepage, though, if you would be oh so kind under the support your favorite reviewer section to use code FIRE1, F-Y-R-E-1, before you make your pre-orders or purchases at showzstore. All the points used and generated from your purchases go towards my account, which I can then use on this figure for future reviews. And I did use points on this figure. So thank you very much for those who continue to support me. The box itself is nice, it's big. We get the standard product shot of Sludge or Proteus in the front holding his weapons. On the side is Proteus in his dino mode. On the other side is Proteus in robot mode. And on the back, you've got a bit of both with some disclaimer information at the bottom. Inside the box is some very lovely black polystyrene. Comes, of course, the figure itself with instructions, a collector's card, accessories. What I have got, but I won't show you on the figure, it comes with, I guess, screw hole covers, but it doesn't say on the instructions where to put them. And looking at the figure, yeah, maybe you could use them. I wouldn't say it's crying out for it, though. The figure comes mistransformed out of the box, so there's a little bit of work you have to do, but I'll go into that when we look at the figure itself. Let's get into it, shall we? And here he is in his robot mode, and that looks brilliant, just on presence alone. I love to feel that the arguably the strongest Dinobot is Sludge. You could argue that Grimlock is pound for pound maybe stronger, but I like to think as hulking muscle, as strength, the large Dino mode, and everything all together makes Sludge the strongest of the Dinobots, just on sheer mass, dim-wittedness and brute force. That really comes across in this figure, the big shoulders, the big feet, the big head, the big torso. It comes across as the gunner, the heavy arms, the heavy reinforcements of the Dinobots, portrayed very well from the comics, coming across even better in this mode. It's sheer presence is great. The build is very good, it feels very hefty in your hands. On first impressions, it feels better than Grimlock, and that Grimlock is still a very good figure, but just getting this in hand, it just feels like it's just been improved that little bit more. Its only drawback, first impression for me, is the red, and I'll touch on this more in Final Thoughts, but I feel it's just that little bit dull. It's almost a burgundy red, and this was the same red used on their Grimlock as well, their Cacus. But I feel that would pop more if it was, say, a postbox red, blood red maybe, a strong, vibrant red. It can just look a little bit dull, even when I've noticed taking a couple of photographs, it doesn't pop in the light as much. You have to do a lot of adjustment to get the figure to pop. It's a dull grey used, which is, again, perfectly in keeping, but with the predominant colour being this gunmetal grey and that kind of burgundy red around here, you're relying on the gold elements around the waist and on the back of the dino neck to really add the accentuations, which is fine. It's just something that I thought if that was just made a little bit brighter, that would be gorgeous to look at. It's really got that hefting presence that Sludge should have. Let's get in for a closer look. Now, a couple of things I'll point out that you have to do fresh out of the box. These spines on his chest or spikes, whatever you want to call them, 
They are in a separate plastic bag so as they're not to break in transport, which is fine. You have to peg them in facing downwards when you get the figure. It's all in the instructions, it's all self-explanatory. You also need to kind of position these shoulder pads, which I don't mind them. They just kind of look like eggs on his shoulders, but yet yeah, you have to reposition those, get the arms into the position as well. His wings, his dino wings, which make the chest of the dino mode, as we know from sludges in previous, are round on his chest. So you have to break those apart. Break, not being the operative word, you have to separate them and then get them round to the back. So there's a little bit of tidying up you have to do, but other than that, he comes more or less like that, fresh out of the box. I would be remiss to mention that the dino head also comes separate and you have to clip it on at the top which you should probably work out for yourself it's not overly clear as to which way it should go and which way you should rotate it but i think that's the right way it should go for then it to come over the top of his head when he goes into dino mode and that's a bit of preparation you have to do it also shows the batteries that go into the back of the head I'll put it on screen as to what they are because I can't remember what they were. I also do not have them to hand, so I will have to get a couple of those batteries. And like with Grimlock, when the batteries are in, you can activate the light-up features in not just the gun, but also within the robot head and dino head with use of his sword or sword, which has a magnetic touch to it just there, and as such will get them to respond. At least that's what the instructions say, but I'll know more when I get the batteries themselves. Another thing I noticed straight out of the box is lack of ratcheted joints. Now, I'm not saying this is a problem, but I'll touch on this more in final thoughts. When you get figures of this size, it's a lot of heft here. That's quite a weighty bot. There's a lot of die cast. There's a very good deal of heavy plastic. There's denseness here. So generally to stop things like droopage on the arms, you have ratcheted joints, teeth that click into one another. You've seen them before on Masterpiece figures that then will bite in so they can hold poses and don't cause any dropping of arms once more. I have not come across any ratchets on this figure, maybe the dino wings at the back. But other than that, it's all friction, which is fine. And it's very good friction. I'm just surprised. Bicep rotation, elbow bend, double elbow bend as well. So you can get a very good rotation for all the way up. The hands, I actually feel these hands are some of the best hands I've seen on a Transformers figure for a while. They're very good tension. They're almost too tight, but not quite. And what I like about them is that they've got kind of a point in this on the end of the fingers. I don't know if you'll see it, but they just have a little bit more character to them, which I feel some Transformer figures just make blocky rock sausage-like fingers and these just have a little bit more elegance to them almost claw-like and they rotate fine they grip fine so yeah i was actually quite impressed with that which i didn't think i would say about hands waist rotation again on a friction bit tight but it will move and again i would have thought ratchet on the hips but it's all friction but it holds at the same time quite stiff friction on the knee and get outward rotation as well again no ratchets and ankle tilt which isn't much to speak of i will say i'll forgive that for dinobot features maybe in as much as dinobots store a lot of their parts in the legs and when you've got legs like that you can't really blame them but it does make for limited ankle rotation you might struggle to get them into some wide stances but that's about it and also head rotation is pretty good. He can look up that far, he can look down that far to give that towering presence left and right. And he also has his jaw opening. Now, this face <laughs> reminds me of the Iron Giant, actually. It's, I guess you love it or you hate it. It's not an attractive face. It's not meant to be. It's to give that derpy, stupid impression. He's not got character. He's not got a flair to him this is not sludge's style this is not this sludge's style either so he comes across very derpy i suppose it fits his character but it does look a little bit plain i guess but it is it's true to the comic design can't say it's not uh, also there's a bit of an outcrunch 
which again really gives that towering down side of it which I really like it's playing to the strengths of the figure he's a big figure if you put him with other figures of a IDW range or not just a generic masterpiece one he will tower over most of them so you can get some very good articulation out of him which you can't often say about big figures and for accessories he comes with his blaster gun which is again a very nice heavy rifle which I think is quite fitting to the character he also comes with his sword or sword now I actually wonder if that sword looks a little stumpy I would like the blade to be that bit longer it's quite a lot of hilt quite a lot going on here but I will say this as a nice little feature it allows you to attach to the underside of the gun and have a bit of a underslung bayonet action which for storage is quite good not that you necessarily need to but he can look even more menacing with it just be mindful if you are going to apply it with the underslung gun on he's got to have his claws or hands halfway out so that the peg of the gun can go in but obviously not to get in the way of the hilt of the sword and that's what he looks like holding it all together and you can see with the arm fully extended that it doesn't have any drooping on any point the gun okay is plastic it's not die cast but yeah that's good to see that you can have a fully extended arm and holding effectively two weapons and there's been no droopage which is testament to the strength of the friction joints on the shoulders and elbows and here he is holding both of his weapons um, absolutely fine maybe a little bit tight to get the pegs in but other than that once they're in they're not going to go anywhere um, yeah pretty good it does make me wonder could he be even more armored could he have had shoulder cannons as well I don't think that was necessarily in the comic but in terms of having a Dinobot sword, which it says you have it that way around, it doesn't matter which way you have it around, it pegs in just fine. And the gun on the other arm, yeah, he looks like the heavy gunner that he's meant to be. I do like how he looks all armoured up. Okay, now on to some comparisons. Here he is alongside Studio Series 86 Sludge. Uh, obviously completely different scale ranges and completely different aesthetics in terms of approach. One's G1, one isn't. But you can see how they look together and it really gives you a sense of how big this guy actually is because that guy isn't exactly small relatively speaking this will give you a true idea of scale here he is alongside Takara's MP44 Optimus Prime that is <laughs> quite some difference uh, I would like to store these two together like that kind of thinking this is Optimus bringing his back up but uh, again G1 non G1 as such but that is a big size difference again Prime is not small so yeah, that's pretty big. That's pretty something. Here he is alongside Generation Toy Tyrant, an IDW-inspired Megatron a stealth bomber version from the IDW comics. Um, I don't believe these two shared a panel, shared a page, but again, giving you an idea of size, that's quite good. I think, again, that's right. I feel that very few bots can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dinobots. This is no exception. And a comparison that most people will want to see, here he is alongside Planet X's previous IDW comic release of Cacus, their version of an IDW Grimlock. I had to go through that horrendous transformation to get him back to have these two side by side. I do like how they look though. I like the fact that Sludge is that little bit taller than Grimlock. I think that's right. To me that makes sense. But when you get these two together, you really do see the similarities yet differences. It's things like I think Grimlock's paint is possibly better. There's a bit more of a polishness to it, even the darker sections where Sludge's paint can look a bit duller by comparison. But interestingly, Grimlock's got ratchets on the shoulders, which I had to remind myself when I pick him up because I normally store him in dino mode. And this guy's got no ratchets at all. But I feel just little things are better. I feel the waist is constructed better than on Grimlock. I feel the head rotation is better on Sludge than Grimlock but Grimlock's ankles are better than Sludge. Just a few things here and there. It's not to say Grimlock is better than Sludge. I will see what the transformation is like, but it's a very nice aesthetic when you get them all together. Now, one thing I had to remind myself of is looking at the IDW panels. If they go through all of the Dinobots, are they all going to be the same size? And I don't think they will. I think Snarl and Slug will be smaller maybe come up to their chest respectively and swoop might even only come up to their forearms swoop's going to be very slender if indeed it does go that far but you can see the aesthetic they're going for 
I do like seeing these guys, these guys together though. The war machine element that again, <sighs> but it's hard to mess up the Dinobots. You know entirely what you need to do. You've got to make them big. You've got to make them menacing. You've got to make them really Decepticons in an Autobot guise. And this is how it comes across. These look like they're going to absolutely destroy you and everything you stand for. So that's why many companies have had success doing the Dinobots. And this is a great aesthetic to go by. It almost makes me want to keep this Grimlock in this mode just to have these two together. But that's how they look together. Let's just hope that Sludge's transformation is better than this guy's was. And for a different flavor of Sludge, but... Damn, these two look good together. Here he is alongside Giga Power or Giga Power, Gravita, their version of a G1 Sludge. And they share characteristics, but maybe that's as much as where the comparisons end. They are quite different, but man, I love the size of these two. It's again why Sludge has probably become my favourite dino now. And it was Grimlock for so long. There are many of them I like, but Sludge, for me, he just has that towering presence that you feel you could easily manipulate him but if he really wants to trample on you he will these two companies have done their representations of sludge very very well and putting these two together yeah that's pretty good that's pretty special I, f I feel this is one of my favorite figures in my collection this is kind of rivaling it in as much as it's got that same wow factor that this guy does i do wish particularly when you get these colors I'm not saying I want this kind of red on here, but I, when you put these two together, that looks almost like a wine colour. And I would just want that to be a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more poppy. When you put these two together, you really have a clean sheen version, maybe a duller, grittier version, which is fine for an aesthetic. But I just think for photography and for what's hitting your eye first, I just want the colours to pop that little bit more. It's only a minor nitpick. But yeah, when you get these two together, man, if you're a fan of Sludge, you're happy with either of these. Okay, let's get this guy transformed up, shall we? And there he is in his dino mode. And yep, I can't get him on the turntable. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Uh, that wasn't an amazing transformation. I had heard it wasn't as bad as their Grimlock. And it's not, but... It's not amazing either. The tightness of the joints that are so good in robot mode in terms there's no drooping, there's no tolerance issues, become tightness issues, particularly around this neck. Now, fine if that's the case, but I wonder if harder ratchets, fixed ratchets would have helped on the joints. Maybe it would have allowed for tension, but also movement rather than just fr friction joints all the way through. I don't know, maybe that's just getting a bit pedantic. But there he is, he's very sizable. He's not as stumpy as I thought he was going to be when I looked at the original drawings for him. I thought he was very body insensuated, but getting him here, he looks nice and long, just what you want for a long neck dinosaur. Very poseable neck, which I do like. You can get some nice bends out of it. Almost like a two-way bend on the go. So he'll pose quite nicely for you. Other than that, <sighs> I will say I can't get this bit fully flush. This is one of his legs transforming back over. Uh, I've got to work on that. Maybe I just need to take the leg apart and uh, fix it back together again. Stuff would come off on ball joints but it would reapply, but I would say it happened quite a bit, possibly more so than I'm comfortable with. Of the two modes, and as nice as this is, I think the bot mode is better, but things like the detailing on the neck really show in this mold. The spine as well is a nice little feature. It breaks up that solid gray, because you can't see the red so much. Now it's hidden away, so you need that kind of added highlight. I think the tail's very nice, very good movement. And yeah, okay, you're not going to be able to pose a long neck dinosaur, a Diplodocus, very easily. But do you really need to? The light up eyes will also work with the batteries and again, be able to touch with the sword or sword. But for now, that's how he looks. He's very sizable, very big boy. Get some nice characteristical poses out of the neck. When you, when you put them all this way back, and see how long that is. 
then it's pretty sizable. I mean, I'll go into an early comparison, but that's a typical Masterpiece car bot. That's Takara's Hot Rodimus. And you can see the length from tail to neck that we're talking about there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Now, in terms of weapon storage, you can store the weapons on here, but I think it looks a little bit unsightly. In that you can use the ports on the back of the legs and you see I've got the sword in the back and the gun down here. I mean, they do fit, they're not lying around, but it's not a brilliant look. But I guess he's, you know, can ride into battle. A bit more of an armored dino than he already is. You're not going to mess with him, are you? Well, this could be interesting for room. On to some comparisons. Here he is alongside Geiger Power's Gravita in dino mode. Uh, I haven't put the Diaclone S shell extensions on the tail just to make him fit in the light box. Um, yeah two different style of dinos. Interesting that Proteus's neck goes up higher than Gravitas does. This gives you a more a fluid neck out and this is more arched but you see them together they're both very heffing, very big. I mean this is, is really not going to do it justice but these are some big big boys. You just It's a cameraman's nightmare just to try and get these two in the same shot. It's yeah that's how they look. But yeah, I haven't got room for two dinos of this size. Here he is alongside Planet X Cacus. Uh, getting these two together. Man, that is a good looking mode, but you can see the differences again in paint, just like you could in robot mode. Uh, yeah, I had to transform Cacus back from robot mode into dino mode again, and f*** that transformation, man. So what are my final views on Proteus? It's a... Very large figure, and I'm a sucker for big Dinobots. It has its problems in as much as the transformation isn't as fun as people say. Now, a few people I know have got this figure say it's not as bad as Cacus. That's probably true. That doesn't mean to say it's good or fun. There's a couple of things that are very difficult, namely as such, and I'll put this on the screen now, where you have to rotate the head around it doesn't tell you that you're not rotating the head as such, you're rotating the neck joint. So when you rotate that around, is the only way you'll get the neck to flip backwards and the head to flip back into the body to then clip on the dino head. Also, there are some pegs that you need to ply in, and if you don't, they will break if you don't untab the head first. There's a few things the instructions don't tell you, and I actually found following the paper instructions that came with this guy, it was the same as the one with Cacus. In the end, you quickly abandon them and you look for online instructions, such as videos. Son of the Empire puts up a lot of good videos which show transformation. I do recommend you check out their videos to show you for transformation. Tolerance issues isn't a problem because there's drooping and there's failing to hold a pose. But there are tolerances that stuff is very tight. There's no ratchets. It's all very tight friction. So, of course, when it comes to the transformation, that plays a part as well. The tightness and security for holding poses for robot mode, for example, is very good. But that then plays against you when you try to transform it. And as much as I love this figure, and I do, I felt when I saw the CAD drawings, it looked a little bit stumpy. And it doesn't look as stumpy in the flesh, I'm pleased to say, but it does still have that swollen body. It's a very mammal-styled transformer, if you see what I mean. Very much a proportion beast mode. And you only notice that when you get it alongside the likes of a Geiger Power. But let me go into the positives about it. The weight is beautiful. The proportions, in particularly robot mode, are fantastic. The transformation isn't awful but it's not brilliant either. The paint is fine. I have heard of paint scuffing, but I haven't had any myself. I do like the weapons and accessories it comes with. I love the tightness of the joints in as much as there's no drooping. It holds a very good pose. It commands a lot of presence. It really does that big bot vibe, a Dinobot vibe, really, really well. Going on to a slight negative of it, I would have liked the colours to pop that little bit more. I would like this grey that you see for the body to be a little bit like his tail. That is a very vibrant chrome colouring and you can see a sort of a night and day contrast. This is a very dark, almost light absorbing colour. The same can be said of the red used. I don't know if it will show up, but that's a red of his chest mode. I just feel it's lacking that pop, that flare. So that's one thing I would wish they would maybe do a lighter colour version. Well, I can't imagine you're going to get a repaint of it, but I would like this to be a lighter colour version. 
I like the posability of the neck. I like the characteristic of the head. It's got that big boy stomp, which I really do like. The big point against it, I mention it every time, but it's the price. Now, this is going for something like 170 or 180, 180 pounds. I don't believe it's worth that much. Only because I don't think many Transformer figures are particularly apparent when it's a Dinobot set. If you think easily, if they did an entire Dinobot range, which you assume Planet X would do, if they all go for around £180, that's a large part of £1,000 that you're going to spend on five Dinobots. And I just, I question when Transformers get near that £200 mark. Is it really worth it? Is this brilliant? Yes. Does it have all the bells and whistles? Yes. Is it worth the price? I feel it's £150. Anything more is just a slight bit of inflation. I don't think it's worth that much, however good it is. I do really like it. I will probably store it more in robot mode, whereas Cacus, I'm more inclined to store it in dino mode. But I do really like what this does. I love a big bot vibe. And as I say, it's really hard to mess up the Dinobots. You've got to make them big. You've got to make them look threatening. You've got to make them look imposing. This does it, particularly when you get it alongside Geiger Power's Gravitor. And you see those two together. Man, that's brilliant. That's so cool. So yeah, uh, it's made me transform Cacus back to get it into comparison, which wasn't fun. I'm not going to tell you it was. It wasn't. But yeah, it is a very good figure. If you are Dinobot minded, if you are IDW minded, then yeah, you've got to try and pick this up. I would say it's better than Cacus, And I do really like that figure. But overall, it just does that things that little bit better, that little bit more. I just wish a couple of things were polished off to give it that top score. And based on that, I give this four Rodimus Star badges. It does a lot of things very well, but it's got a couple of big points that hold it back and a few little ones as well. Would it be a contender for bot of the year? Maybe. It's a really beautiful figure. Uh, I do wonder if tolerances could be an issue with the tightness of the joints, breakages, maybe. You could hear some ghost stories coming out. It is tight, don't get me wrong, it is. I would recommend that you use a spludger or some part separator during transformation just to give yourself that assurance you're not going to break pieces off because there is some tight tolerances here. And there we go. That is my review of Planet X PXC05 Proteus, their version of an IDW sludge. I'll put some photos up at the end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button because I will see you on the next one.